The last part of this lecture concerns spontaneity. Spontaneity has a special meaning in chemistry. It doesn't mean that you're willing to go out on a whim and go have a good time with friends. There's actually a very specific definition. So matter and energy are components of the universe. And now you have knowledge of how we classify matter in chemistry as atoms, elements, molecules, and compounds. These are physical objects that take up space. Energy is defined as the capacity to do work. So it can be in two forms, potential or kinetic. And kinetic has many forms, thermal, electrical, nuclear, to name a few. You're probably most familiar with kinetic energy. This is the energy of motion. And the physics formula, kinetic energy equal one half mv squared where mass is in kilograms, velocity is in meters per second, and the kinetic energy is in something called joules. So to give you an idea of relative scale of energy, imagine a five kilogram bowling ball rolling down a bowling lane at an average speed of five meters per second. The amount of energy that bowling ball has when it hits the bowling pins is 62.5 joules. And nobody wants to be hit by a bowling ball. But that amount of energy, 62.5 joules, pales in comparison to the amount of energy that's available in chemicals and chemical bonds. So chemical bonds contain what's called potential energy. Chemicals store the energy in either bonds or intermolecular forces. So here are some examples of potential energy. A truck on a hill that's not moving, it's got a wheel chuck. But as soon as you remove that wheel chuck, that truck will turn its potential energy into kinetic energy. A stretched rubber band. This again has potential energy. As soon as you release that stretched rubber band, it's gonna turn into kinetic energy and move and a stick of dynamite. That's an excellent example of chemical energy. That stick of dynamite, as long as it's not too badly aged, is going to be just fine until you light it and give it some kinetic energy. So the idea of the energy that materials contain can actually be rated on a vertical scale. So if zero is down here, and increasing energy goes up, you can imagine that a stretched rubber band has high potential energy compared to a loose and floppy rubber band that has low potential energy. All this was the setup for the definition of spontaneous. Spontaneous reactions are ones that release energy as the substance moves from higher energy to a lower energy state. So, which occurs spontaneously? Have you ever had a floppy rubber band sitting on your desk that suddenly gets stretched out? So here it is, sitting on your desk, all floppy. And then you look over, and all of a sudden it's stretched out. I don't think so. But have you ever had a friend have a taut rubber band, a stretched out rubber band in their hands and then release it and shoot it at you? And then the next thing it's sitting on your floor all floppy? I think all of us have had that experience at one time of being shot with a rubber band. So let's look at the energy changes of these. In the first one, where the floppy rubber band on your desk mysteriously becomes stretched out, the energy goes up from initial to final. In the other scenario, where your friend shoots you with a rubber band, the energy goes down from initial to final. So which one of these is spontaneous? Well, of course, this one, right? Your friend shooting you with the rubber band. Once the stretched rubber band is released, it spontaneously goes to floppy. You have never seen a floppy rubber band become stretched out, unless you're at Hogwarts, I guess. 
but this is definitely a non-spontaneous reaction. So spontaneous are reactions that go from high initial energy to lower final energy. Now let's look at the energy change for that. Non-spontaneous changes are going to be ones that have energy going in. The final energy is greater than the initial energy, so the energy change is positive. Spontaneous reactions are going to go from high initial to low final energy. And in chemistry, our energy changes are always going to be final minus initial. So if you take the final energy minus the higher initial energy, you're going to wind up with an energy change that is negative. So spontaneous reactions have negative energy changes when you compare final minus initial. That's the bottom line. And what that means is systems in nature will seek the lowest energy. So here's a last question for you. If you have a situation where the initial energy is minus 2 kilojoules and the final energy is minus 10 kilojoules, what is the value of delta E and would you consider the change spontaneous or non-spontaneous? So this is a much easier question than you might realize. You're given energy final. So let me put that here and you're given energy initial, so minus a minus 2. I trust you can do that math, come up with the proper sign, and associate it with spontaneous. Another way to think about this is on an energy scale. Let me draw an energy scale. This is increasing energy. Here is 0. Here is minus 2. And here is minus 10. So our initial is right here, and our final is right here. And of course, changes go from initial to final. So I'm sure you can figure that out. That ends lecture two.